my opponent, a, a, a liberal Democrat named Colin Allred, is outraising Beto O'Rourke, my last opponent, three to one. They are flooding millions of dollars into Texas. And the reason is simple. You remember my last reelect? It was a three point race. I won by 2.6%. Ted Cruz is sweating right now because the race between him and his Democratic opponent, Colin Allred, is a little bit too close for comfort. Now, I think that his internal polls may be painting a bit more of a bleak picture than state polls because it admittedly doesn't look that bad for him. As you can see, he does have a comfortable lead in most polls, although some polls do show that they're tied. But when you factor in how Democrats have been overperforming polls lately, those ties look a bit more alarming. Furthermore, when you look at the results, results from 2018, he only won by 2.6 points, as he pointed out in that video. So when you take into consideration Colin Allred's massive fundraising numbers, it begins to look pretty bad for Ted Cruz. And uh, he knows it looks bad, which is why he's getting desperate. So much so that he's practically begging for money now on Fox News, then running said video of him begging as an ad on Twitter. For example, he's been running this ad on Twitter for weeks now. I'm right now, as you know, in a very tough re-election race in Texas. The Democrats, Chuck Schumer has made clear I'm his number one target. The Democrats intend to spend over $100 million to defeat me in Texas. We just had a poll last week that showed it as a one-point race, and yet we can expect Mitch again not to spend any money to defend me, which means the, the only way that we hold on it, it, it is if the folks watching this show, go to tedcruz.org right now, go online to tedcruz.org, make a contribution of five, 10, 25, 50, 100 bucks, because my race, my support is not from the big money special interests in Washington, D.C. It, it, it is from constitutional conservatives across the country who go to tedcruz.org and, and, and who help Give me the resources to withstand a hundred million dollars from these left wing Democrats and Marxists who are trying to invade this country and destroy this country. Nothing screams desperation like cutting up a Fox News appearance as an ad. Just amazing stuff here. Now, what stood out to me was him saying that his donations are not coming from big money special interests. What? Yes, they are. We can see who's funding your campaign. It's not small dollar donations from constitutional conservatives. Your money comes from big money special interests. His top campaign contributors include APAC, a genocidal organization that lobbies on behalf of a foreign government that is, by the way, bankrolled by GOP billionaires. There's also Club for Growth, a conservative PAC bankrolled by GOP billionaires like Jeffrey Yass, and not to mention the individual donations from Boeing, Delta Airlines, and Blackstone. And these donations do not include leadership PACs, but when it does come to individual donors, it's not like he doesn't have any small grassroots donors, because he does. Small donations under $200 make up about 47% of his overall campaign contributions. Now, that number is comparable to Republican senators, including Mitch McConnell, where donations less than $200 make up about 50% of his overall campaign contributions. Now, no one would argue that Mitch McConnell relies on mostly small donations from constitutional conservatives because that would be absurd, right? The trick is that all of this is hidden through dark money being funded through super PACs, but not just super PACs. When it comes to Ted Cruz, we're talking about shady podcast deals as well, because as Rolling Stone reports, quote, Cruz's fundraising concerns may explain a very shady financial arrangement the senator has with iHeartMedia, the hosting platform of his podcast, Verdict with Ted Cruz. Last week, the Houston Chronicle reported that the radio network paid out $630,000 to a Cruz-affiliated super PAC, Truth and Courage. According to FEC data reviewed by the Chronicle, the six-figure sum represents about a third of the PAC's fundraising haul since 2023. The Lose Cruise PAC, a political action committee challenging the senator's re-election, first reported a $214,000 transfer from iHeartMedia to Truth and Courage in March. A Cruise campaign spokesperson told the Chronicle that the senator appears on verdict three times a week for free. A representative from the company said the funds were the proceeds of sales for the podcast's advertising inventory and that Cruise volunteers his time to host the 
this podcast and isn't compensated for it. That's bullshit. But if iHeartMedia is sending massive checks to a PAC affiliated with his re-election campaign, is there really no benefit to Cruz? Right. Quote, it is really sad what's happening to the media, Cruz said when asked about how he could reconcile the payments with his claims. He isn't compensated for the podcast. The media exists right now seemingly to parrot left-wing Democratic attacks. Yes, because how dare the lefty media ask questions about this incredibly shady podcast deal that he has with iHeartRadio, who not only funneled hundreds of thousands of dollars into his super PAC, but hasn't disclosed the terms of this deal between them and Ted Cruz to the public. Now, to be clear, this is a violation of campaign finance laws, hence why ethics watchdogs at the Campaign Legal Center and End Citizens United filed an FAC complaint against him. Now, whether or not a federal probe will actually be opened up has yet to be determined. But I mean, if it's illegal to coordinate with your super PAC, yet iHeartRadio is seemingly compensating him for his podcast by donating directly to his super PAC, does it not logically follow that he is effectively soliciting donations for his super PAC by hosting a free show for iHeartRadio? I mean, it's suspicious at a minimum, but it's not unreasonable to expect that this is an arrangement that they made and we just don't have the details. But, you know, if they release the terms of the agreement, well, that's one thing, right? They can prove that there's no quid pro quo going on here and that there's no illegal coordination between him and his super PAC, but they haven't done that. Hence why there needs to be a federal investigation, hence why an FAC complaint was filed, because this looks really, really suspicious. But what was it that he was saying again about needing money from working class Republicans? And 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 I'll tell you how we're fighting back against it. You've got the Democrat fat cats, you've got big tech, you've got celebrities writing checks to my opponent. We're supported by millions of Americans, millions of conservatives all across this country that go to our website. It's tedcruz.org. They go to tedcruz.org. They give 25 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks. That's how we stand up to the George Soroses and the Chuck Schumers and the Mark Zuckerbergs is, is the 25 and 50 bucks at TedCruz.org because we got to fight to defend Texas. If we lose Texas, we lose the whole country. Oh, that's right. See, he is full of shit and he's trying to dupe working class Republicans into giving him their hard earned cash when his billionaire sugar daddies are already subsidizing the cost of his campaign. He wants Republicans to think that he's fighting, you know, these powerful interests in Washington when in actuality the powerful interests are in his pocket. He already sold his soul to them. But regardless, this is going to be a difficult race for Ted Cruz and his desperation is absolutely palpable and you love to see it. But it just feels like especially dirty that he's now trying to guilt trip regular people into giving him their money because this is a scam. Like if you give this man your money, you are a rube because he's not fighting for you. He's fighting for the special interests he's pretending to oppose. He's fighting for his donors, not working class people. So if you give him your money, you are being duped. So don't do it. Now, with that being said, I genuinely hope that Ted Cruz loses because that would be the most hilarious thing imaginable. And I think that it might be closer than his 2018 campaign between him and Beto O'Rourke. But we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, it looks great for Colin Allred right now. He also have the, has the name recognition. This is a former NFL player. So... Ted Cruz is right to feel threatened, but that doesn't mean that you get to form these shady podcast deals to funnel money into your super PAC. That's not acceptable. Desperation is not an excuse for corruption. Me, me, me. Yeah, I'm Ted Cruz. Me, me, me. Alpha male, not a beta male.